Hey guys, Blue Thunder 650 here, bringing you another episode of Big Dig number 17, uh, ASMR edition, because it's 1248 and Jacob needs to finish his project, but doesn't want to wake his parents up. So, uh, there's this thing, it's called Watergate Scandal. Um, let's talk about that. Five guys broke into uh, the Watergate offices, which is behind the Watergate Hotel, which you're seeing right now, um, and they basically try to wiretap some phones, collect some uh, info for President Nixon, which was found out later, um, but I'm not really focused on that as much as I am. How hard was it for the want to get people to break into the offices? And if it was too easy or too hard, why'd they do it? And or how easy or how they get caught? Oh, the first, I did a quick fly around, but um, Let's take a look at my very good hotel, Watergate Hotel. Um, I've decided to spend more time on the inside because I just couldn't get the outside right. So I humbly named it, uh, What Would Watergate Look Like If Three Monkeys Who Were All Legally Blind Designed It? Um, yeah, as it says there. But it's what's on the inside that counts, so let me take you inside. And we'll talk more about Watergate. Great. So here are five men, starting off with James Walter McCord Jr. Uh, another name is Ed Martin. Uh, don't please apologize. Uh, I cannot speak Spanish. So Virgilio Vio Gonzalez, Bernard Baker, and Genio Martinez, Frank Sturgis, and my freezer just started to buzz because I'm doing this downstairs at twelve forty-eight. And yes, he uh, he looks like the king of rock, but that's because I'm using a Minecraft mod. Anyway, these five men broke into the Watergate Hotel. Surprisingly, not to install the bugging equipment, or even to initially take photos, but rather to repair the equipment. There had been a break. There had been a break in earlier in the year, around in early 1972, to install the initial bugging devices, uh, and these five men went in to repair it. Um, so let's check out the first office that they went into. go. The first office that they went into is uh, Robert Spencer Oliver's, who was the executive director of the DNC at the time, which means, uh, which is the Democratic National Committee, which was the opposite of Nixon's political party. So what they did is they came in, um, they took out files from uh, lockers like this and saves, and they took pictures of them. And they also rebugged the phone. They fixed the implant in the phone. Um, yeah, and they took pictures of everything to just steal information. The next office that they went to was a man of Larry O'Brien. Uh, I believe this is where they got caught. Um, they were doing the same thing. They were going to implant a bug here. They never did or didn't get the chance to. And they took pictures of the both the archives and all the papers that they had out as to find information. So my question here is, how hard was it to do that? Um, were there hundreds of guards there? Was it really top-notch security? Um, because they did get caught. Well, the answer is it was quite easy, in fact. There was only one guard, a man by the name of Frank Willis. Um, at the, at the time, he was patrolling at the, only one guard patrolling that area at the time, um, and he had done his patrol. And the reason he had even called the police in the first place was because he had found a piece of duct tape locking the door open. So, oh, he, there was a piece of duct tape over the lock. Um, and the first time he saw it, he took it off, and he didn't even he didn't think twice about it. And when he came back for his second patrol, however, he found that it was there was another piece of duct tape. After realizing that there's uh, a multiple, uh, there's a break in, he called the police immediately. But you got to be pretty stupid to put it back on. The police came, they arrested them at 2:30 a.m. on June 17th, 1972, and they found about $2,300, uh, 40 rolls of unexposed film, and three pen-sized tear gas guns, which was interesting, on the five men. Um, clearly. The money was to keep the for paying off the people from Nixon, 
Um, and the thing about the $2,300 was that they were all $100 bills in sequential order, meaning the order of the number of the bill, like the bill has a certification code to make sure that it's not a fake bill. And each one of the numbers was directly after each other, which um, gave the House of the Treasury um, evidence. They were like, hey, this has got to be really unlucky. Um, so the five men were sent to jail. Um, because they were convicted of conspiracy, burglary, violation, federal uh, wiretapping, and, fire, and violation of federal wiretapping laws. Um, what I found interesting was that only three of the men were Cuban. Um, Bernard Baker, Virgilio Gonzalez, and Engino were all uh, Cuban, but Frank and J James were not. Frank, however, went back to, uh, went to Cuba um, to uh, help fight Fidel Castro in the uh, fight. So, James McCord was not Cuban. He was Cuban, 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 not Cuban. He went to fight uh, Fidel Castro in the end. What I also thought was interesting was that Bernard Baker happened to um, be a... was found... Suspicious because he was near, he was seen, he was positively identified in two photos uh, at the uh, uh, at the JFK assassination with a assault rifle. So uh, two men identified him positively, and they think that might be that might have to do uh, something. Along with surprisingly Frank Sturgis, who was actually arrested at the time of the JFK. Um, JFK assassinations, which I was thought funny. They all participated in the attempt to take down Fidel Castro. And yeah, so let's go back to the question. How hard was it to break into the Watergate Hotel? Not hard at all. There was one guard, several floors. He took patrols that took him about an hour. So the whole route was an hour long. And the only reason they got caught was because they made a dumb mistake twice. Not even the first time. Um, so yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, I'm probably going to have all my links in the bio below. Um, give me a good grade, Mr. Wilgus. I did a lot of research for this, and the you can ignore the Minecraft part because I just explained it all in words. But I mean, this is, this is not easy. I'm really tired, too. It's... It's 12.57 a.m. Um, but yeah, so that's all. And I think I'm going to head out now and I'm going to end the video uh, staring directly into his eyes. Maybe this will make a good screen saver. Right. Uh, bye. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Good night.